Hello and welcome back to Universe Sandbox 2. So today we're going to be testing what happens when we drop multiple human-sized objects, well not human-sized, but objects we deal with on a daily basis, uh, dropping them from orbit into Earth. Something to be factored for though is that this game does not in any way account for air resistance. So, no objects. I actually have a terminal velocity, which makes pretty much everything extremely deadly, but we'll see that in a very, very short amount of time. So, uh, I guess, I guess this video can be more accurately named, uh, what, what if air resistance did not exist? And the answer is, things get a whole lot more dangerous if you drop them. Uh, you could murder someone by dropping something off of a building, etc. But let's do some testing. We'll uh, go over to somewhere we know very well, you know, the continental United States and Mexico. And we're going to go ahead and drop a bowling ball. How far away are we going to drop it? Drop it from just outside of the atmosphere. So here's our bowling ball. We're dropping it right outside of the atmosphere. And let's keep an eye on its speed because as it speeds up, it gains more energy, and the more energy it has, the more damage it can do. Uh, also, the closer it gets to Earth, the more gravity affects it, so it speeds itself up even more. And by the time we impact the surface, we're already going at about 3 kilometers per second. This is going to do some real damage. This is very, very fast. <laughs> um put that in perspective, 3 kilometers per second is fast. <laughs> I don't I don't actually have a scale for that, you know. If you if you run a mile, do that about uh twice and then uh do it all in 1 second and that's how fast it's going. Okay, so is it actually going to leave a mark? It may not. This game is kind of touchy. So it didn't actually leave a mark, but it was moving pretty darn fast. So we can assume if we do the same thing again, but have the bowling ball further away from Earth, it'll do more damage, right? Okay, so let's see. These boxes are each. Why aren't they labeled? Bring, bring the labels back. Okay, we're just going to drop it from here this is very far from earth uh but that's going to allow it to gain a lot more energy so we are currently gaining in the meters per second because as said before when it comes to it uh it's a small object very far away so gravity doesn't affect it much but as time goes on and this is the only object in the simulation other than earth it's going to get attracted to earth and its speed is going to increase as it does so. So now we're at about three kilometers per second again, but we aren't even close to where we were before. And you can see that it's speeding up as we go. Four kilometers per second, five. And this is going to hit with a uh, velocity of probably about, not 10 times, five times what the other bowling ball hit with. Is this going to be enough to do any noticeable damage at 10 kilometers per second? 11. Make that 11. Let's see. It's a very, very small object, so it may not. So the answer is no, there is no visible damage. Of course, where it hit, there's probably a little crater. And by little, I mean really little, like however wide the bowling ball was, plus a little bit. So now we're going to get a little bit ridiculous. We're going to set this thing so far away that we can't even see Earth. And this is going to be the ending of our bowling ball tests. But let's see what this does. We are very, very far away from Earth so far that I don't even know what direction it's in. So, uh... I can figure that out though by checking the direction the ball is going in. It's going this way, so Earth must be going this way. <laughs> um, we're going to speed things up a little bit. Uh, 
we can tell how close we are by our speed. Uh, once we start getting into the kilometers per second, it should actually uh, be visible where Earth is. Oof. That sped up very fast. I was not actually ready for that. And what impact did it have on Earth? None. Except we've went ahead so far that, you know, Earth has frozen from the uh, fact that there's no sun in this simulation. Good job, me. Okay, so we've come to the conclusion that we need a little bit more punch than a uh, bowling ball to do any real damage to the world. So what are we going to use? Now, we could do damage with a bowling ball. We just have to ex well, speed it up quite a bit. Uh, just for the purpose of testing. Let's have it move a little bit to get it on the right direction. And let's see what happens if we fire it at Earth at light speed. This obviously would never actually happen unless someone really didn't like bowling balls and really didn't like whoever was on the surface. But, you know... Some things need, uh, sometimes things need to be tested. Light speed, one light speed. Okay, now this is going to be going very fast, so we're going to slow down our time scale. Here we are, and we're still gaining speed from gravity, so it's going to be slightly more than one light speed, but not enough to really matter. So this is in milliseconds per second, so uh, multiply this by a thousand and that's how fast it's moving. Very, very fast. Okay, so our bowling ball, which is more akin to a photon now, except it has way, way, way more mass, is about to strike... What is this? India. We're about to strike India. And as we near it, we're going to see if any damage is actually done. Here it is and bang now it still has a very very small mass but will it leave any mark in previous versions of universe sandbox 2 it would have but it appears that no it is not enough mass well at least it's realistic this time around we're going to have to go with something a little bit bigger And by that, let's go... We're gonna skip up a little bit. I mean, there's a marble, but... Up here, we've got the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I think that this is about the size we're going to need to actually do damage. So we're going to, once again, drop this from orbit. A pretty high orbit. And because this is more massive, it's going to gain more speed from gravity. So we can already see we're going a kilometer... For a second, two, three, four, five, six. Now this, you would not want to fall on you. This would be very, very painful to have fall on your head. Uh, pyramid moving at over 10 kilometers per second would definitely do some damage to your head and every other part of your body. You'd probably be instantaneously crushed. And by probably, I mean unless some strange quantum physics event teleports you out of the way. And impact. Ooh. So we can actually see that the impact has caused the pyramid to fragment and spray out. Is there any noticeable shock? Oh! Okay, yes there is. So now we've hit a point where there are actual noticeable shock waves from these collisions. And we have a crater because of the immense speed of it. It's a tiny crater. The little bits are coming back down. Those little bits realistically would have never survived because of air resistance. But once again, this is what if air resistance didn't exist? <laughs> um, so it appears that India has been uh, hit pretty hard. And the question is, if we move it further away, <laughs> uh, our greatest weapon is gravity. Because if we move it over here, we can do a lot, lot more damage. So, if you want to destroy the world, just get a pyramid and drop it very, very high in the air. 
and also get rid of all the air on Earth so that there's no air resistance. I mean, at that point, you'd already be, like, destroying the world because everyone would die, but, you know, sometimes people want to be a little bit overkill. If you want to not only uh, asphyxiate everyone in the world, but also drop a pyramid on the Earth and, like me, mess up completely, uh, go ahead. Nothing wrong with that. So, considering I completely messed that up, <laughs> um, let's plop Earth back down once again, and we can grab another object. Are we going to do another pyramid? Maybe we can do something different. What else do we have? Now, the biggest object here is a pyramid. So, for testing purposes, let's go really far away in this. I'm, I'm going to be extremely careful this time not to mess everything up. Um, I'm going to slow it down at each landmark speed. Okay. So, we are currently going very slow. So, we're going to speed up a little bit. Now... The interesting thing about gravity is Earth is also being attracted to the pyramid. So if we wanted an accurate representation of the amount of uh, velocity they're hitting each other at, we'd have to add a tiny bit. Because although it's very small and it doesn't have much pull on the Earth, it does have pull on the Earth and we can actually check Earth's... Yep. Yep. Look at that. Very small, but it still is having an effect. So, speeding things up a bit more, once we get towards like 1 meter per second, I'm going to slow it down a bit. Since everything is proportional to the distance squared, it's kind of uh, challenging to time it because it increases very, very, very quickly once it hits a certain point. So, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, we're gaining so, so much speed. Look at that. We almost get an extra meter per second out of this going this far away. <laughs> the question is, when is it just not worth going further away for more speed? Um, if it was a bigger object, this would do a lot more. But this is not a very large object. So now we're at one meter per second. So we're going to keep our eye on all the numbers two meters per second how impressive five six seven uh yeah we're going to worry once we hit like a kilometer per second because that means that we're just what how did it how does it do that it just it just went whoop and it does <laughs> i don't understand <laughs> The game cheats. Okay, so it appears I'm not going to be able to do that. It is, the game isn't going to let me. The game's going to be very mean to me. Okay. So for our last test, I mean, let's just destroy the world. That's kind of what the uh, purpose of this game is, but the, the bottom line is, unless you have a really big object, you're not going to be doing any damage. Um, but let's say that you dropped the uh, Great Pyramid of Giza from like 10,000 kilometers in the air. And uh, let's say that you kicked it really hard and you achieved light speed. So congratulations, you now hold several world records and your leg is fractured into one million pieces, probably more. Um, Kicking an object that big at that speed would probably break every bone in your body from the kickback, but uh, Yeah Congratulations, you've won an award, so it's all worth it. Let's set that speed to one light speed um, Also, you're probably indirectly destroying the world because the uh, <laughs> Just the fact that it's going to burn through the atmosphere the amount of debris it's going to cause but this is, this is not going to be very fun for the people of Earth. Uh, I'm just gonna say that because this is, this isn't a ton of mass, it's not like an asteroid, but moving at the speed of light, the amount of energy, uh, goes really, really high. <laughs> 
and here we are entering the atmosphere even though it's not simulated and three two one any second now we're going to have collision maybe not <laughs> maybe I'm just bad at counting down and oof earth has been struck is earth actually just going to absorb the blow oh look at the shock wave from that it is going to reach across America um, will it make it all the way around the world no only across America we need more mass to make it all the way around the world but that's a decently sized crater considering it was just a pyramid like how I said just a, it's just a pyramid <laughs> falling from the sky um yeah if you want to see any real damage you can get like uh, mercury and uh mercury is as forgiving as a pyramid mercury is going to try its very best to ruin our days and uh let's see let's see what mercury does oof well, guys, I know this was kind of a silly video, and we didn't really do much, but thank you all for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time. Bye.